We're going to go next to what that looks like here in Orange County and talk about the continuum of care or the COC. So um, the continuum of care uh, means two different things. And if I was queen of the world, I would like change this because it drives me bananas because the two things are sort of related to each other, but they're not the same thing. Um, one thing is a big pot of money, continuum of care, COC funds. The other is like the group the, that's a geographic area, which for us is Orange County, um, that like coordinates all homeless services and whatnot. So COC means those two different things. So I'll try to be really clear, like I'm talking about the COC, the group, or the COC, the, the money, <coughs> through this next part. So first we're going to start talking about the COC, the group. So there are 12 COCs in North Carolina. So COCs are defined by HUD, and they have like clear responsibilities. If you're looking at this map and you're like, but wait a minute, Corey, there's like most of that map's like one color. Yes, that's the COC that I used to work at called Balance of State. <laughs> 79 counties in North Carolina, but we here um, in Orange County are um, the smallest COC in North Carolina. And what HUD says, HUD's very clear in their regulations and whatnot of like what COCs uh, have to do. So you got to work on your governance and your structure. So then this again is like another reason I just love my job so much is like public administration, one on one type stuff. You look at the the planning, the strategic planning and the operations and the database that we use and coordinated entry is one of the things that's required for COCs to do. So it's a great thing that's a good idea because it's required. So what that translates to is that we just have like a lot of meetings, like a lot of them. Um, if anyone wanted to come and just do meeting notes for me full time, I would really appreciate that because they are difficult. Um, but we, yeah, have a lot of meetings. Um, the leadership team, so um, both Jerry and Sarah are serve on the leadership team uh, for the Orange County Partnership to Homes. So that's the board. This is the, the governing body that makes all of the decisions. I'm the administrator of the partnership, right, so I carry out their decisions. Um, we also have a group that does care coordination for the most vulnerable people in our community. So this is a a federally recognized sort of best practice to keep a, a by name list with people's consent um, to say you know, how are folks going to get into housing and to prioritize our limited number of vouchers based on that vulnerability. We also have a, again, like super um, progressive thing called outreach court, um, which is a therapeutic court model for people experiencing homelessness with very low level charges. We're not talking about, ooh, um, sorry, high level things, but we're talking about like um, open container, that kind of like level of charge, very low level. And the goal is that um, folks can get those um, charges dropped if they connect up with services, get into housing. Very cool, very um, progressive model here in Orange County. Uh, we also have groups that work, <coughs> excuse me, that look at the data and our grants and all the reporting requirements for that. And then we have a specific group that looks just at veterans who are experiencing homelessness or at risk of homelessness to try to get those folks connected up with services with all the different veterans groups. So that's just a, a smattering of those are the standing meetings every month. And then we have special meetings and whatnot. So. Meetings, meetings, meetings. Um, it takes a lot of meetings to end homelessness. Um, again, like I said, we have a really big tent approach, and the goal is like is that you would have representatives from all these very um, long list of, of groups who are coming, participating, sharing their expertise um, in how we end homelessness. We need a lot of folks at the table. Okay, I'm going to switch gears now and talk about the money part of the COC and talk about how the money works. Um, so there, the money is divided unevenly into two groups um, of funds. First is the COC pot of money, and the second is the ESG, or Emergency Solutions Grant. It used to be the Emergency Shelter Grant, and they changed that to change the focus from just on shelter to other how, um, types of things as well. So different programs that are eligible for funding under the COC, Permanent Supportive Housing, Rapid Rehousing, the Database, the HMIS, um, you can fund coordinated entry issues, um, projects and whatnot with that. And then um, there's COC planning money that comes out of the COC grant. Not a not a ton of it, but it used to be zero, so we're happy that it's more than zero. So that's great. Um, and then the ESG money, there's um, prevention, shelter, rapid rehousing, and again, that database, the HMIS, is eligible. So how does the funding work? <coughs> we could spend an hour just on this side. Yeah, Margaret. 
sorry, that's the database that's required by HUD. So it's the Homeless Management Information System. Um, and this is a database that gives us a lot of our information. It's, it's required. It's a good idea too. So that's great. Um, but, uh, yeah, for anyone who gets money from HUD who's not a domestic violence agency is required to use that database. So we could talk about an hour about this slide, and I have before, but um, we're not going to today. But the, suffice it to say, there's a lot of folks involved. This is like the COC funding process. There's a lot of different people involved. HUD gives the money directly to agencies, but like there's a lot of stuff that has to happen on the local level to, to make that uh work to get the money, um, including we've got to like prioritize locally and come up with our own criteria and screen all the applications and then write this ginormous community application. So there's a lot more information about that on our website. The ESG money comes through the state. So HUD block grants the ESG money to different entitlements. Um, and Chapel Hill's not big enough to get our own entitlement. Like Durham has their own entitlement. Winston-Salem, Forsyth County has their own entitlement. Big Wake County, et cetera, Charlotte. But um, we are not that big, so we get our money through the state block grant. And so the state gives us the application, and we um, apply with all the other folks across the state for that money. So that's a much smaller pot of money. So we qualified for... It was just like over 65,000 in ESG funds. So that's, so that's the sort of how that translates here and a little bit about the money and how that works.